Okay, let's try a little hover, shall we? Ah, no, no, no. So that is what I wanted to show you to not do. Totally intentional experience for your education purposes. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, all right, so durability testing. Uh, phase one complete. Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. Today we're taking a look at the Potensic Atom SE mini camera drone. Is it any good or is it complete garbage? Find out at the end of this sentence. It is not complete garbage, um, but it's not as good as what it is trying to look like, which is a DJI mini drone. So, hmm, so what do you actually get for your money's worth? Well, you're looking at it right now. Uh, you should be seeing the image of what you get out of this camera, the video quality, and you can see how stable it is or is not. And you can determine pretty much from that whether this thing is going to do it for your video quality needs. This does not have a three axis stabilized gimbal. It has image stabilization. And that's why in the video you're seeing the bobbles and you're seeing the tilt of the drone. And that's because you don't have a gimbal to stabilize the camera real time in flight. So that's part of how you're saving that $150. So for me personally, my big thing in terms of, you know, thinking about this drone, if you're trying to compare it to a DJI quality, uh, both in terms of construction and video image, you know, end result quality, it falls short. It falls very, very short. Uh, but the price is also short of that price as well. So this guy right now is going at about 290, 290 US dollars on Amazon.com. But there is a $50 coupon currently also on Amazon.com. I haven't looked at the price anywhere else because a lot of people just buy from Amazon. So that's where I looked. So at $240, I still feel like that's a little high. I'd like to see this thing under $200 personally. But that's, you know, that's basically what you're going to get. Uh, and uh, speaking of what you're going to get, what we're going to do with this uh, video, I'm going to give you the bottom line like I am right now. And then I'm going to take you out to the field uh, and give you my impressions. And you'll see like firsthand flying it and kind of how that went. And then I'll go ahead and do the unboxing and show you what comes with this kit that Potensic sent me because they did send me this, by the way. Full disclosure. Uh, thank you, Potensic. We'll be giving this away, by the way. Stay tuned for that video. And then... Um, um, I will do a little disassembly because I decided to disassemble this just to see what was inside and I'll go ahead and throw that in there or I might put it in another video. I haven't decided yet. So if I had to sum up this drone in a sentence, I would say it is a very nice toy quality drone. It is, it's, it's like... It's higher than toy quality because it does use brushless motors and all that stuff. I'll put the specs up or have links to the specs because, you know, that's, I feel like that's the, the person that is looking for this drone. You're not going to be comparing specs. That's kind of the whole thing like this. You would buy this drone if you are more price sensitive and you want to save a hundred, maybe $150, um, and get this instead of a DJI, uh, mini two, um, or maybe even just the older Mavic Mini, uh, I think those would be potentially better options if you actually want good image quality and like maybe this is for business or you know for uh, vlogging or or maybe you want to use it for some real estate stuff. Um, this would not be up to this up to snuff. You would not want this. You would want at least something like the quality that you're going to get out of the DJI Mini or the Mini 2. And I know this video is not really about those drones, but if you're looking at this drone, you might have already seen those other drones and those are kind of like the gold standard. The DJI drones are like the gold standard. If you look at this drone as almost like a DJI trainer drone, so almost like you like the idea of a DJI drone, but you really just want to have fun. You want to get a drone up in the air and have a camera and be like, oh, wow, cool. Isn't that neat? You can see things from up in the air, um, but you don't really care about having super smooth video. This actually could be a good option. Um, and ha not having a gimbal could actually be a benefit in that it is much more durable. Ah, no, no, no. So that is what I wanted to show you to not do, because if you do that inside, 
with light poles around, there's a good chance that you're going to hit a light pole. So I hope that everybody learned from that uh, experience there. Totally intentional experience for your education purposes. Let's see what we got here. Um, so, you know, the good thing, well, this is one of the things I was thinking about what might be the good thing about having, about not having a actual gimbal is that maybe it's actually more durable. All right, so props are you know, a little bent up, but they're not too bad. I probably should have checked to make sure that they were really tight. So this uh, one leg just kind of bent in. Nothing appears to be broken because the gimbal is one of the most sensitive breakable parts of the uh, of, of a camera drone basically um, and I see those broken all the time uh, for sale on eBay where everything else works but the gimbal is broken that's like the first thing to break when people um, crash their drone and yes when not if um, so yeah that's that's actually it what would seem like a downside of not having a, a an actual gimbal is kind of an upside depending on how you look at it however i will also say the tilt motor on the atom se is horrendous and it's just very choppy you'll see that when we take it out to the field speaking of that let's head out there right now i think i summed up everything in the bottom line let's go out to the field and show you the experience of this and then if you're still interested we uh, will continue on to the unboxing kind of part and I'll show you what's involved in this and a little bit of the setup to get this thing going and you will need a smartphone and you will have to download the Potensic app and you will have to allow uh, certain permissions like location permissions and things like that through the Potensic app so whether that's trustworthy or not I don't know. In here and I've got I'm using a SanDisk uh, ex Extreme 32 gigabyte card. I use this for like my GoPros and stuff and the other DJI drones, so it should be, it will be plenty capable to handle this guy. All right, um, that's pretty much it that we need out of the bag itself. Let me get my telephone. Stick the phone like that. Let's go ahead and turn this guy on. Turning on the transmitter. Download new firmware. Man, dude, I just downloaded this thing the other day. Download button to download it for better flight experience. It is recommended to download the latest firmware immediately after connecting to the aircraft into the op operation interface to upgrade. Well, all right, since I'm reviewing it, let's go ahead and download it. Um, so let's say, say download. So I guess it's downloading it to my phone. So fortunately, I have uh, you know 5G or 4G. Um, so I have a data plan on my phone. If you didn't have a data plan on your phone and you're out in the field and didn't have Wi-Fi, you would not be very happy because you would have to go back home or wherever you could get Wi-Fi. To update stuff and that's really annoying but I think we can fly it without updating it but for testing purposes I'll just go ahead and uh, update it right here I mean I guess at least they keep they keep the firmware up to date so that's good um, so yeah I had a few little run-ins while testing inside um, but everything's okay the propellers are all right they're just a little scuffed up and then I made sure that they were all tightened down with the little screws, you know, that uh, hold the propeller on, propellers on. Okay, we're gonna power on the drone. We just updated the firmware. Short press and then a long press. Okay, it seems like a pretty fast kind of boot up time. Let's see here. Okay, camera firmware upgrades. Well, I already did the upgrade. I just did the upgrade, so what's what's the deal? Maybe it wasn't connected before? That's silly. Okay. All right. So I guess I hadn't upgraded because maybe it wasn't connected. All right. So let's uh, let it upgrade now. See how that goes. So it's a camera upgrade apparently. Unless they just mean the drone. They might just mean the drone. Okay. It's been uh, about, oh, I don't know, maybe five minutes or so. And it, uh, the drone just went doo 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 doo. So it, oh, okay. I thought, I thought we were connected. Okay. Uh, maybe we weren't. Okay, wait, are we? Okay, we are connected now, so I guess you just have to wait a while. 
All right, drone flight control upgrades. Upgrade information, optimize power on off experience, optimize safety strategies for OPTI mode, added return to home altitude adjustment option, <sighs> upgrade conditions, blah, blah, blah. Okay, oh, so we, okay. All right, so now we need to upgrade the flight control, apparently. That's disappointing. Um, that's, but I mean, again, like I said, it's nice that there are upgrades happening, but it's really annoying that it's like, hey, we decided to change something about how the drone works and you can't fly your drone uh, unless uh, you update it first. So we get to decide if you can fly your drone or not, basically. Don't like that. All right, so let's back up a little bit. So again, camera settings, resolution ratio, that doesn't, you know, help much. I don't like that. Let's turn on that grid. Um, let's format the SD card just to make sure that, okay, make sure that's the correct one. Okay, so EV, is really all that we have to change that. I'm mostly interested in the video, uh, but if we want to switch to photo, we can switch to, uh, let's say we want to do JPEG and RAW just to see what those look like. And all we can change is the EV <coughs> setting. That's it, all right, so we have, uh, let's see, I'm not sure what the, oh geez, man, I just accidentally tapped a little bit on the screen right there, and then it went back home, that's annoying. It is a little hard to hold the transmitter. I will say it's a little tricky like this and then it's also hard to put your thumb somewhere without touching the screen and your thumbs are a little bit pinched they, they have to come in a little bit too much as opposed to being out here okay let's get this show on the road what does that do oh that's the intelligent mode we'll play with those later maybe uh but let's just do some filming and see what it looks like so let's go to our video mode it says a 2.7K, I don't want that, I want 4K, baby. That's what we came for, right? Okay, let's start her up. Actually, let's do, uh, let's try the takeoff button. After, this 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 text is uh, way too small right here. Pretty sure there's a snake in that grass. So we're gonna be extra careful about where we are. After sliding, confirm takeoff, the drone will guide take We'll guide, take, we'll take off and hover. Okay, cool. So we're gonna slide this. Oh, geez. That, that doesn't sound good. That actually, that sounds worse than it did earlier back at the, back at the office. Okay, so it is fighting the wind a little bit. I think that's why it's sounding like that. Um, but you can see how much it's drifting around. Like, it's it's drifting around a lot. Like, a lot. It's kind of circling. It's going in circles. And I, I feel like it might be going a little bit out of control. Wait, nope. It's okay now. Okay, it, it calmed down a bit. Pretty, pretty sensitive. Okay, so the control mode. Let's do it. Go on those three dots. The speed settings. Wait, beginner mode aircraft will only fly at restricted speed. Yeah, let's turn that off. Um, so speed settings, let's change it to video. And you can only do it, apparently, through this, you know, menu. Flight fence, uh, flight altitude. Yeah, we want that to be like 400 feet. Distance limit, 98 feet. Let's, I don't know, make it a bunch. Um, and then circling flight setting, I find that interesting. Uh, radius, 33. Um, and then that way. We'll, tr we'll try that out. Not quite sure how to get it to circle. Oh, what's on the screen? Condensation on the screen there. All right, so, so the, the controls are supposed to be in video mode, but this thing is very agile, apparently. Not really seeing any difference there. So it won't let me switch to sport mode if, unless I'm above eight meters. All right, let's bring it back down to land if I can. Right back on here. The controls are very sensitive. 
Okay, I'm coming into land. Trying to, I can't control it apparently. Uh, I can't control it as it comes down. It just comes like straight down pretty much. So let's take a look at these sensors, make sure they're not blocked or anything. Um, they look okay to me. The camera looks like it has a little smudge on it. That might have been my fault. I'm gonna start recording. Let's go ahead and take it off manually. Okay. So you can see it's it's quite sensitive. Um, this is supposed to be the video mode, which I would think would be less sensitive. I'm not sure. Goes pretty darn fast, but man, that video is bouncing around a lot. There's a lot of lag whole lot of lag on the video screen, that's for sure. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. So, all right. Well, let's see, it's really hard to do really slow m movements here. I can kind of do a little bit of an orbit thing. The throttle is actually pretty good. It's actually pretty smooth on the on the throttle on the up and down. That's nice. This scroll wheel is way too far down. It's the way that th these tiny little things are like for tiny little hands. And this scroll wheel is way too far down. I want the scroll wheel to be like pretty much where this record button is. I'm trying to go upwards and it's like the choppiest thing like ever so if we just kind of look at the ground you can see how much the ground is moving let's bring it up so I can tell that like I'm just tilted with the wind here maybe I can turn into the wind and that might be a little bit more manageable uh, Let's fly out over here a little bit. I, see, I can't even, it's not sensitive enough to, to try to, like, oh gosh. All right, let's get it up real high. I know people, people give me such a hard time for flying really low. And they're like, what are you doing? You're not supposed to fly that low. And I'm like, well, you know, that's where all the action is. Okay. All right, so let's get up here. Okay, we're still bouncing around. It's pointing way down for some reason. And, you know, I'm not, like, this is crooked. Like, can we, is this gonna look different once it's recorded? Cause it looks crooked right now. It's supposed to have this shake vanish, shake vanish image stabilization or something, but this is more like, I don't know, I can't think of a good line for that, but it's not great. Okay, and there's no indicator of where the gimbal is, what the gimbal is looking at. Um, so if I just push forward, like we're gonna fly in this direction, it's, it is fairly smooth as long as you're not moving anything at all. The camera can kind of compensate, but as soon as you start to move, it doesn't do so well. So, oh gosh, all right, so let's, let's kind of do a pull away shot here. So we're, we're pulling this, the, the stick back. We can kind of, oh geez, all right, I was trying to do that nice and slow, but there's no control over the, well, it's not even really a gimbal, but like, or there's, sorry, there's not, there's no fine control over the camera tilt. So when I tilt the camera, um, it just tends to be jerky and way too fast there's like no expo on it so that's not great why don't we bring it over here and try and see like what the heck is that man that's bad that's bad let me try and orbit this light pole here okay all right so kind of 
one down here at an angle. This is hard. This is not great. All right, so let's just try and orbit this light pole. Well, the, because of the lag and how the controls are, it's super hard to get this right. Okay, that actually looks halfway, halfway okay. If I just hold the controls and I don't move anything, we can kind of get an orbit out of it. Okay, but the horizon is not level. So the image is not level. This is looking like how it would be if I was orbiting with a FPV drone. Um, but if I try to make some corrections, it will, it will jump around drastically. So that's not great. Okay. Or if I try to tilt the, the camera, that looks awful. It's shaking all around. It's just crazy. All right, and then I let go, and this is what it looks like. Let's see if we can kind of get sort of close to this. Let's see if I just make tiny little movements, and I'm having such a makes such a jerky motion on the camera. Because then, if I if I try to make movements to correct the motion that I see on the camera, it messes things up even worse because the lag is so bad. All right, so that's cool. Let's uh, let's take a photo of this. So let's let's uh, just go, let's press the camera button. All right, so let's press the video button to stop it, I guess. Okay, and then let's press the camera button to take a picture of that. Let's go ahead and take another one just in case. That's, oh, there we go. All right, let's take another one. Okay, let's uh, lower the, the the drone and tilt the gimbal up a little bit. Okay, let's take a picture of that. This is silly. It takes a long time to take a picture, man. Let's go ahead and take a picture. A 12 megapixel picture, apparently. Let's go ahead and take another one just in case that one didn't work. Okay, and again, we don't have any options for the shutter speed or anything like that. Okay, so you can see with those lines, uh, the lines on the, 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 the framing lines on the screen, you can see how off kilter the horizon is. Let's kind of lower, get lower. Low power, please exit the sport mode. Dude, what you said you're saying you say I have like eight minutes of flight time left. What do you mean low power? What are you talking about? Okay, so let's get out of sport mode then. Oh, it already exited me out. It's like nah nah nah. You don't need to be in sport mode. You're gonna be in normal mode. And I'm like, well, what if I don't wanna be in normal mode? Alright, let's go back to the video. Got a little glitchy on the the feed there. Okay, we're back in the video mode and let's kinda come right around this tree if we can golly gee that's jumpy okay okay let's kind of do a little fly oh okay that's not smooth at all can't really do a smooth flyover thing but let's fly right over the tree here let's kind of see what that looks like let's tilt the gimbal up slowly towards the horizon majestic reveal of the horizon which is crooked okay so anything but majestic and everything I just described, at least according to the feed here. So we're gonna go full forward and get real low to see what the uh, video quality looks like there. So I wanna see how low I can get. Kind of bring the, oh, that's full up tilt on the gimbal. Honestly, this thing is booking it like pretty darn fast. Like that—that that is one thing that is actually pretty impressive about it. Let's see if I can try to smoothly fly this. And I, I kind of can't. I'm trying to do a nice little turn here. It's well, that was that wasn't so bad. All right, let's do a little flyby. So it's you know I mean it's got some power honestly. Like I'll be honest with you. Like. It, it it raises up really well. It, it feels like it wants to, it feels like it wants to be an FPV drone, I'll be honest with you. 
is is kind of more of what this feels like. Um, like if you put a an FPV flight controller or you know a, a Acro flight controller in here, which maybe that's what it is. Honestly, like that is kind of how this feels. We'll have to take that apart. I I wonder if they basically just got, you know, basically an FPV drone thing and then made it look like a Mavic Mini, which is funny because that's actually what I did. I don't know, maybe they thought, hmm, that could be interesting. All right, so. Yeah. Quite a bit of stopping distance there as well. Interesting, very interesting. Okay. All right, so we've got four minutes of flight time left. We should probably set her down. Let's see if we can land it. And just barely could land it. And now let's move on to the unboxing and setup and show you what you get in the package. Let's see what's inside, so if I would say. All right, let's just tear through this. Let's see what controller. Okay, we'll drone itself. Okay, interesting, interesting. And, okay, oh wow, that's kind of overkill. Well, it feels really cheap. Well, it feels very lightweight, which is easy to associate with being cheap. Okay, so these arms fold directly back. We have this shoulder strap. This is the actual manual. Okay, multi or multi, multi-language user manual. We have, let's see, one and two batteries. Lithium ion, uh, 2,500 milliamp hour, um, 7.2 volt nominal charge, 8.4 volt max charge. USB-C cable, what appears to be a full spare set of propellers. A little tiny screwdriver with the propeller screws. Adapter cables to go from USB-C to, uh, let's see, USB-C, micro USB, and um, Apple, what do they call that now, lightning? So that's it, that's all, that's all that comes in there. Nicely padded though, you know, nice, honestly a, a decently nice bag, not super high quality, but at least, you know, oh, it's even got hard rubber on the bottom, wow. But, you know, it, it looks like it will protect it quite nicely. I, ooh, that's kind of clever, look at that. Interesting, interesting idea there. Okay, so we've got the typical buttons on here. Yeah, there we go. We have a scroll wheel, like a takeoff and landing button. This thing must have a battery in here. Uh, 2200 milliamp hour, um, 3.7 volt battery. So that's actually pretty pretty nice that it, you, know, you don't have to use like double A's or something. It does have a USB-C port. The phone that I'll be using is a Samsung uh, Galaxy Note 8 and uh, so it's kind of older and it's it's fairly long although phones these days are so huge oh it fits look at that it fits okay all right we'll be right back okay so we've got USB-C to USB-C so I'm gonna take this QR code scan it with my phone that's gonna pop up ah, let's get the Potensic app let's go ahead and download that I'm gonna go to Google. Let's go ahead and tap on that. Okay. Welcome to Potensic Pro. In order to protect your personal information without your consent, we will not obtain or share information provided to you from third part, part, parties. <laughs> third parties. Um, sensitive permissions such as location will not be turned on by default and will only be turned on when using the function with explicit authorization. That actually sounds like good. That sounds like a good thing, which makes me suspicious of it, but okay, well, hit agree. All right. So now I don't want to register. What if I don't want to register? Like, can I not register? Could I just not? Please? Could I please not register? Okay. Select device model. 
Atom SC, Zoomer Pro. Okay, so we have the Atom SE, Sierra Echo. Mount the phone on the remote control and connect the OTG tablet, uh, OTG cable, install the joysticks, press the long power button there, and then pull this out so it fits. Okay, open the Potensic Pro to handle Android AOA interface. So let's say OK. All right, so now they say unfold the drone arms and make sure they are not crossed. Insert the smart battery and make sure the battery uh, buckle is out. Like so. There we go. All right, so the aircraft needs to obtain flight location information to ensure save to to ensure save flight records store captured. Please allow it to access to your location information. So, I don't really want to, so I'm going to hit cancel. What happens? And we're back. All right, so now it's saying, uh, click this thing to re re preview this required content or something. Okay, so we're going to click that. Now we're going to click that. We have to do the tutorial apparently. So tutorial instructions. Okay. Click to see how to to see how to connect the current model. Display the correct correction connection status of the drone and okay. So it's connected. Okay. All right, so let's hit enter device. Um, I mean, like, what if I don't want to? Like, what if I don't, what if I don't want that? Hmm? They're just like, yeah, well, too bad. That's, uh, that's how, that's how it's going to go. All right, so compass calibration. Uh, please stay away from metals. Hold the drone more than 1.5 meters above the ground and rotate the drone according to the animation instructions. Start calibration, okay? Horizontally. Okay. Am I going the right way? Okay, no. Vertically. All right, so you can just do this. You don't actually have to like spin in a circle. It's kind of funny. All right, I can definitely feel the hardware on the drone getting warm just from this. All right, calibrated successfully. There I am. Put that up against the wall. That actually looks fairly good. We'll see how the lag goes when it gets farther away. No GPS. Take off with caution. It's connected. Um, let's just see if we can start the motors. Whoa! That's always fun. Okay, let's... Oh, they, they just shut off if they're not doing anything. Interesting. Okay, let's try a little hover, shall we? Ah, no, no, no. So that is what I wanted to show you to not do. Because if you do that inside with light poles around, there's a good chance that you're going to hit a light pole. So I hope that everybody learned from that uh, experience there. Totally intentional experience for your education purposes. So, you know, don't do that because I'm a professional, so I, I, can, I can make mistakes, all right? Okay, good. So, uh, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, all right, so durability testing, uh, phase one complete. Let's see what we got here. Um, so, you know, the good thing, well, this is one of the things I was thinking about what might be the good thing about having about not having a actual gimbal is that maybe it's actually more durable. All right, so props are you know a little bent up, but they're not too bad. I probably should have checked to make sure that they were really tight. So this uh, one leg just kind of bent in. Nothing appears to be broken. Camera seems to be okay. All right, that was a pretty soft crash. Good test of uh, the system. All right, and the camera is still working. Now, what I'm going to do is um, take when I take this off again, I'm going to go into a at least a much larger room or outside and see what's going on because maybe there's something weird about the calibration or maybe it maybe it has to like you know 
give have some more room to stabilize. If you leave it on for quite a while, it starts doing those beeps just like an FPV drone. Uh, so it says the camera is overheated. This little thing, this little temperature sensor that comes up. That's because it's not flying. So I'm going to go ahead and shut it off. Press and long press. And it should shut off. We'll just let the camera cool. And then we'll uh, we'll take it out like when it's not raining or something. And, and give it a try. Okay, interesting, interesting stuff. And that's going to do it. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope this was helpful to you. If it was, or if you have any questions, leave me a comment down below, and maybe I or someone else will be able to help you out. Stay tuned for that giveaway video, and I will see you again very soon. We'll get, I mean, we get bars.